All right, so now we're going to go back to the factor in quadratics with trinomials. And now we're going to look at what happens when A is not 1. All right, so yeah, these are the fun ones. So these take more brain power and some more creativity. So I'm going to be showing you over a few videos some very different strategies. Um, but however, the one in this video will always work. So if you just need something to go back to, this is the basics. Okay, so always come back to this video if you need to. All right, so this is called, I mean, it's called guess and check. I kind of like the word trial and error a little better, but when, whenever, whatever you want to call it, whether it's trial and error or guess and check, um, you are making an informed guess or your trial is, is going to be well informed. Okay? And this method is very, very good. Um, it's easier when A and C are prime. Okay? When your first uh, number and your last number are prime numbers because that means your choices are limited. Your trial and error will be a lot shorter. So again, I want to go back to, I'm going to go back for a minute, to our FOIL, our distributive property. All right, so let's say I have 3x plus 1 times 5x minus 2. Okay, so when we FOIL that out, we're going to get 15x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 2. And then again, we combine these like terms. All right, so I'm going to have 15x squared. When I combine those, I'm going to get negative 1x and then minus 2. So how this is going to differ than the previous time is I cannot just look at this last term. This last term, uh, the negative 2, that came about when I did my... my um, my last term, so the 1 times the negative 2. All right, but notice that I also have this 15x squared. That came about when I did my first. And then this one came about when I did my inners and my outers. So this one was caused by my first terms. All right, so it's the 3x and the 5x. All right, this one was caused by the last ones. This single one was caused when I did the O plus the I. All right, the the outers and the inner, so when we do FOIL. Okay, so when we're doing this, we're going to be checking, we're going to use that, um, the inner, that middle term again to check to see which combination is going to work. All right, so let's go to our example so you can see exactly what I mean. All right, so when I'm looking at these, I know that in order to get this first term, these first ones here and here, they had to multiply to give me two. Well, two is prime, so that means I only have one combination for factors, right? It's going to be two and one, and they each had to have an x. I'm going to get rid of those. I don't like those spaces that I put. So I'm going to have two x and one x. Okay, and then to, in order to get three, I could have had three and I, I could have three and one. That's the only combination, right? So three and one. Now here's where the the order that we put the three and the one matters because if I had the same first terms, two x and x, but then I switch the three and the one, those would be very different answers, right? So I could have something like two x plus three x plus one or two x plus one and x plus three. So we need to be able to figure out which one is the correct one. And we're going to use the, the middle term, the 7x, to help us do that. Remember, in order to get that middle term, we did the outer ones and the inner ones. So the outer uh, product is going to be 2x. And then the inner term is going to be 3x. So if I were to add those together, 2x plus 3x, that gives me 5x. That's not 7x. So I know that this would be the incorrect combination. All right, let's do it for this one just to make sure we've got it right. So the outer ones are 2x times 3x, and then this is 1x. So 2x times 3x is 6x, 
and then this one is 1x. So when I add this together, yes, and I do get 7x. And since everything's positive, I know that those would both be positive. Again, you can double check yourself, you can FOIL it out and make sure that you're getting that. But this is how we're going to be checking our combination. So it's, it's a little similar to what we're doing, except we're not just considering this last term, we're considering both of them. So we're gonna be writing our parentheses and then checking our inners and our outers. So let's do that again. Let's do it with another example. Okay, so do you notice how my A and my C are prime? So this is going to make our, our choices limited. All right, we won't have as many parentheses to check. <clears throat> so I know that this first term had to be in 5x and 1x. Those, it doesn't matter which way you put it. However, when I do my 3, this could have been 3 and 1. Or again, I could have had 1 and 3. So I'm going to have to list that other possibility, that other combination. OK. And then those are the only options, right? I can't get 3 any other way, and I can't get 5 any other way. So we're going to be checking these, and we're using the 8x. So we're checking the outers and the inners. This is 3x. This is 5x. Do those add up to be 8x? Yes. OK, so this would be our correct one. So these would both, be, again, be positive. These were easy because we didn't have to worry about positives and negatives. Just they're both all positive. Again, to, just to reiterate, if, if you had done this one first by chance, and then this would be your inners and your outers, this would be 1x, this would be 15x. And you see that 15x plus 1x is um, going to give you uh, 16x. All right, so that's not correct. Okay, so I know that this is going to factor to be 5x plus 3 and x plus 1. Now, going back to my theme again, if, if this was an equation, it was equal to 0, and these factors would then be equal to 0. So we set each factor equal to 0. So you can see when we do this kind of factoring, when we solve, we're going to get fractions for our answers, and that's totally okay. Do not be freaked out by those answers. So those would be our two answers to that quadratic equation. All right, so let's do one here. Now, do you notice that this is not prime? Okay, so that's okay. You can still use this. You're just going to have more options. And depending on how many factors that that number has, it means that you're going to have even more combinations. So I've got this 3 is prime, so I know that's going to be 3x and 1x. However, 4, I could have 1 and 4, right? I could have four and one. And then I have another way of getting four. I could have two times two. So I have another option. And this one, since two times two, they're the same number, we don't have to switch them, obviously. So I wouldn't write another one with a two and a two. But you can see how this list could get very long if that four was, say, a 12. How many different factors do you have? And then you got to switch um, the order, too. So when you're doing this, you not only have to come up with the factors, but then you have to switch the order of the factors as well. OK? So you can see how the trial and error process could get very long, um, depending on your numbers. All right, so, but it will always work. So if, if you need to, you can always come back to it, even if it's a long process. So let's start checking our inners and our outers. These are the outers, the inners. So this would be 12x, and this would be 1x. Now, going back to our original one, do you notice how this 4 is negative? That means that um, with these green numbers, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So when we're checking our inners and our outers, we're really seeing if 12x minus 1x is going to equal 4x, OK? So you're subtracting here. So that's not it. 12x minus 1x is not 4x. So this is not correct. Check these outers and inners. 
So this is 3x, this is 4x. So 4x minus 3x, that's not 4, so that one's out. All right, so inners and outers, this is 6x, this is 2x. Good, 6x minus 2x is 4x. So now we've got to figure out, do I want 6x minus 2x? That would give me positive 4x. Here, our 4x is negative, so we would really want 2x minus 6x, so positive 2 and negative 6x, right? So again, keep track of your negatives. You've got to be careful and mind the details. And then I always like to put it here when I'm checking my inners and my outers. That way I know, how did I get negative 6x? I'm going to get that by doing 3x times the 2. So my 2 would be negative. How did I get my 2x? I'm doing 2 times x. So I want that to be positive there. Okay, so that's how you can determine which, one, which sign goes where. Okay, and again, what do you do if you're not quite sure? If you're on a test and you're not sure about your signs, foil it out and check it. Let's do one more. I'm going to have you try this one. Pause your video and then um, and I'll come back with the answer and then you can, we can talk about it and, and see if we need any other clarification. So I have boxed in here what your answer should be. You can um, pause this if you want to so you can look at my work, but basically I've just shown how uh, these are my two options. I check my inners and my outers. Right here is just me checking the inners and the outers. You can see here it doesn't equal 13x, here it does. All right, so, and then my signs are developed there. Make sure you have a net, you want your negative 14x and positive 1x, and that's how I got my signs where they are.